Okay, in the last video we set up this really simple template and we customized it a little bit. We added our own title and we played with the copyright thing a little bit. I want to talk now more about templating and we've we've scratched the surface with templating by declaring a variables.php file and pulling some of the variables that we want from that file. But we can go much deeper than that and, and template this out even more. So let's think about this. If this was going to be our website, we might have 100 pages on that website. And each of those pages are going to have certain things that are the same on each of those pages. For instance, they're all going to have this top nav bar on every single page, right? Most likely. They're all going to have this same footer on every single page. Well, if in the future we wanted to, for instance, add another link to this top nav bar, and there's say like a thousand pages on our site, it's going to be a, a huge pain in the ass to go to every single one of those pages and add that link. And then maybe a, a week later you want to add a different one. And so you have to go back and change them all again. Uh, so it's a huge hassle and we don't want that. So what we want to do is break this into templates and much the same way that we created this variables file, we're going to create different files for different sections that we can reuse on each page. So let's start out by creating a new file and let's call it uh, navbar.php. So let's go into index and let's find the code that is the navigation bar. And this template's commented very well. We can see right here, here's the navigation section. And it looks like if you click this bottom one, this top one highlights too. So everything between here and here is navbar. So let's just highlight all of this and hit Control C or right click and, and click copy. And now let's go over to our navbar.php and let's just plunk all that right down and save it. Now let's go back to our index.php and delete delete all this stuff. Oops. Oh, almost okay. Boom. So if we save this come back and hit reload, something's going to look horribly wrong. And yes, the nav bar has disappeared. Well, of course it has, we just deleted it. Well, let's put it back. How do we do that? Well, if you remember this include, this includes a file. There's a similar function called require once. And it does sort of the same thing, but slightly different. So let's, let's see what this looks like. Require underscore once semicolon and our tag okay and this is a function a built-in PHP function so we can pass a parameter into it and we're going to pass in the parameter navbar.php and let's save this oops let's save this now you'll notice when we use this include statement at the top of the page we had it at the top of the page yet we're using the stuff that's in our variables.php file all over the place we're we're using it down here in the copyright section up in the title section all over the place on the other hand this require once this is going to output whatever is in this file right here it's going to spit it out right where you put this tag so be careful where you put this only put it where you want it to output and boom there we go just like that we've got our nav bar again so anytime we we want to add another page to our site we don't have to put the nav bar on that page we can just put this line of code on this page and then later on if we ever want to change the nav bar for instance if we want to add another link let's just copy this link paste it in and let's call this free consultation save it we so we saved it in our navbar.php file if we hit reload on our site that link should pop right up boom right there it is free consultation and that is really really cool so let's take a look at this where else do you think we should do that well i mentioned the footer every page of our website is going to have a similar footer so let's go ahead and create another file here. Right click, new file, let's call this footer.php. Let's go to our index page, scroll down to the footer section, 
And again, very well commented code. So we can see that this is the footer section. It's even called footer. So if we copy this, open our footer.php file and just paste it in, save it, and even close it. And then we delete that and create a PHP require once footer.php. Wrap that in single quotes, semicolon, save it, hit reload, and there's our footer, which I think is just really cool. Now, you might also want to do the same thing for this sidebar because you're going to constantly want to change the sidebar and every page of your site if it's a blog like this will have that same sidebar now if you think about it wordpress works the exact same way this is how wordpress works now wordpress also connects to a mysql database and that's where it stores all its information whereas we are still stirring uh, we are storing our information in this variables file so it's not nearly as sophisticated but it's the same concept it's wordpress templates things out if you look at a wordpress page you're going to see these require and include tags probably and it's doing the exact same thing it's pulling different things and, and and putting them together to create different pages so this is a very powerful idea and it's a very powerful concept that's going to allow you to scale your websites quickly create many many pages update those pages quickly when you need to and it takes some thought beforehand so you need to always sit down We've just made one page here, but we're st starting to put together the format of all of our pages in the future. So if we created an about us page, blog, blog post number two, blog post number three, they would all sort of look like this. They would have these requires on them and they'd all be stuck together via the templating that we've been doing. So whenever you build a website spend a few minutes thinking about how you can break it apart into different sections the nav bar the footer maybe the header the sidebar and, and template these things out because the more you can break these apart the easier your life is going to be in the future whenever you want to make changes so i think that's all for this video and maybe that's all for this course i think right now you have a very solid understanding of php you know the basics variables strings for loops, arrays, you understand tying this all together and using it on a web page, outputting dates on your web page, using variables on your web page, templating out the different sections of your web page. And uh, I think you've, you've got a very solid understanding of the basics of PHP. And now you can go out and uh, do some really cool stuff. So I hope you enjoyed this course. If you did, head over to codemy.com. That's C-O-D-E-M-Y.com. Uh, this is a very basic course. I have many advanced courses and lots of different subjects, Rails, HTML, CSS. If you're curious about all this HTML and CSS stuff, I've got a course that teaches you about that there and a lot of other things too. It's just a really cool resource. Check it out and I hope to see you there. And if you want to get my entire PHP course absolutely free, head over to codemy.com slash free PHP. That's codemy.com slash free PHP.